Hello, and uh, I'm doing this tutorial today because I get people that complain a lot about Painter not doing the same thing in Photoshop. And what I mean by not doing the same thing is uh, in Painter, the way the uh, strokes are, are very different than Photoshop. But in Painter 12, there's an option that will let you create a brush that's very similar to Photoshop with some exceptions. And why don't I just give you a demonstration of a stroke in Photoshop that people want in Painter. So in Photoshop we have the opacity set to 31 percent and if I do a light stroke I get a very thin line and then if I try to press down it'll get fatter and when I try to cross over it doesn't add on to itself so like for example doing this blob here it'll stay at 31% and does not add on to itself until it touches a stroke that's already been made. So now that I've lifted up my pen and I do this again, you can see that it added on to itself. So what you want to do in Painter is in Painter 12, I can't help you in, in any other versions of Painter, but in Painter 12 I'm going to go to the categories and I see a basic round brush. That's pretty much got everything I need to use, so I'll select this brush. And in Painter, I'll show you, as you cross over it, it'll usually like add on to itself. So doing a stroke like this, you can see right here, it's adding on to itself. And it'll continue to add on. And since that's a major difference between Painter and Photoshop, people don't like Painter. So as I said, it introduced a bunch of new options. So going over the basic round, and then the next thing you want to do is you can either go to Window, and you can go to Brush Control Panels, but the shortcut here is Control B, and Mac it's Command B. So once that's there, you'll get a panel like this. Um, I have had mine arranged a certain way. Uh, just like my toolbox, you can see I've put it across because I'm on a laptop and I need more space to see my documents. So I thought this uh, horizontal layout was a lot better. Okay, so now that we've brought this up, you'll see this menu here. And as you can see, if you double click, you'll pop open the tabs in Painter 12, which makes it a lot easier to deal with. So currently the brush is at these attributes, circular, single, cover, soft cover. Now the next thing you want to do is you'll notice the opacity is at 31%. Ramp that up to 100 and then right above that you'll see use stroke attributes. Add that on, leave the merge mode as it is, and now mess with the stroke opacity. So in Photoshop I was using one at 31% and I'll use one over here at the same percentage value. So now when I make the stroke it doesn't add on to itself and as you can see here it's the same thing. Now I've lifted my pen I stroke over and as you can see it does this. Now again there are some exceptions to how it behaves uh, differently in Photoshop and one of which is layers and to teach you how to work around this trick I'm gonna empty this canvas here. Give me a second. Okay I got two layers. I'm gonna make another layer. Um, okay so layer one we're gonna treat it like a Photoshop brush again. We're just doing this. Okay and I'm going to make a color here. We'll just use this blue for example. And I'll go back over, of course, making this about 60% opacity by stroking it back over. Now in layer 2, if I try to go over this one in yellow, it doesn't quite uh, merge the colors the way you would expect. One of the ways to get around that is to change the mode to gel cover. And once you do that, you'll notice that now, when I go over the blue area with yellow, it actually makes a green. The other thing to be aware is that if you do this on too many layers, it'll start causing problems. And the second, the, the actually one of the most important things to be aware is this particular thing is pick up underlying color. If it doesn't pick it up, uh, if you don't have that option enabled, it also looks funky and introduces white into your areas that you're coloring. So always have that checked off. 
Now, for example, if I have this red and I'm on layer 3, and I'm going to go back to this layer and introduce this yellow again. So I have something to work with here. So you can see that it'll turn orange. If you work with over three layers, I've noticed that it starts acting a little bit funny in certain areas. So you might want to be careful on how many layers you have. And also, uh, if you have bleed on, you might want to turn that off so it doesn't try to do weird, weird blending when you're uh, introducing more colors on a layer. And over here, resaturation, you may want to ramp up to 100%. Resaturation is uh, how much of the original color is introduced. It's it, the higher the resaturation, the higher the original color comes up. The higher the bleed, the more blendy the brush becomes. So let's say that you're kind of happy with this brush, and now you're like, well, I want to keep it, and you don't want to ruin the original brush you had in Painter. So in Painter 12, there's uh, some new options. And uh, as you can see, like I have an icon with uh, my own custom brushes. What you want to do is now that this is open, you want to save the variant. And just for simplicity's sake, we'll just rename this variant to Photoshop Brush. And uh, in Painter, you can put it in any category you want. Uh, but let's show you how to like make your own category of custom brushes so that you can easily go to them. So right now I'm going to leave it in the default category that I got this brush from, which is tinting. Do not save current color because it means that you'll be saving the color that you were painting in. And you don't want to do that. You want to just use whatever color you want with this brush. So hit save after you've named it. Now go back to the brush category. And on the bottom, you'll see Photoshop Brush. Okay. So what you want to do is you can right-click here or hit the fly out, and you can make a new brush category. So now you have, like, custom brushes. We'll just do that. Hit OK. And now you have a custom brush category, and you have the Photoshop Brush already in there. Now, if you don't like the icon, you also have choices to uh, set your own, uh, just like I did. And I'm in a folder here full of pictures of, uh, well, this is actually Craig Mullen's art. But f just to show you how quickly and easy you can do this, just double click the picture that you want. And now your brush category has its own custom image. And of course, there's a Photoshop brush. So if you took this Photoshop brush, you can drag it. And once you see that your icon that you want it to go in is blue, just let it go there. It'll move into that category. And of course there's two, but brushes in this new custom category. And if you don't want that, you can just tell it. Right click, remove variant. It'll prompt you to say if you're sure, because uh, sometimes you may not want to. And you hit yes, and it's gone. So there, now you have your own custom category. And just showing you mine, my custom category, I'll highlight this here. You'll see like I have a bunch of uh, brushes I have already made, and I may go over them in future videos. But if you don't like the order that this is in, let's say that you don't like this being here, if you hold it and drag it up, you can move the order very simply. And there you go. It's just that simple. And... I kind of named mine the tinting brush. It's the same brush as this Photoshop brush that I just showed you how to make. And I'm going to remove this variant again. Yes, please. And if you want to share your brushes now with other Painter 12 users, uh, especially with the 12.1 update, you have to have this update. Otherwise, it's going to be a little more difficult to um, export brushes. You can export your brush 
or you can export the category, or you can export the entire library of brushes that you have. And that makes it great if you have, like, um, let's say that when you do another update and you need to reset the workspace, you have an option of saving all your brushes and exporting it in case something goes wrong with the update. Uh, but you want to go into category, and there's your, it'll prompt you, and it's like yes, and then you can save it wherever you want. And like if you save this here, of course it'll save there into the documents file. And then you can find it, you can zip it, and you can share it with other people online. Um, I hope that kind of helps anybody that was like frustrated a little bit with Painter. I mean, I know it can be a pain at times, but I find it actually a lot more um, intuitive once you figure out its quirks in uh, digital painting and a lot more natural.